One of my favorite parts about working on projects is when you get to fabricate your own parts for them. Whether it's something small like a bracket or a mount or something much larger like an intricate jig, I love creating things from scratch. Today we're going to be working on the Fummins project installing a remote oil filter kit from Packbreak. Now Packbreak doesn't make a kit for a Cummins and a Ford, so we get to fabricate. We get to make mounts. Welcome to the channel, and whether you're new here or a returning viewer, I want you to know that you are appreciated. Now, oil and filtration is very important for a vehicle. So we better get in there and get busy so we can get this job done. So some people refer to this as CAD, cardboard aided design. I actually use a lot of these file folders or manila folders to do templating just because it's very easy to work with. Plus I got a whole bunch of them for free at one point. I'm using a metal scribe to draw my lines because then it's easier to go back and fold and tear on the lines. Typically when I do this, I start with a rough shape. And in this particular case, my rough shape is actually a mock of the angle iron that I'll be cutting this from. So by creating that shape first, I know how much material I have to make the final bracket. I don't know what the final bracket is gonna look like. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. Occasionally I do find that the fold and tear method gets to be a little rough if I need something to be precise template wise. So I grab my trusty favorite scissors. Now that I have a template made to be the size of the angle iron, I can start to lay out how I want the bracket to look, where the holes are going to go, that kind of stuff. And of course, this is way easier to work with and cheaper too if you make a mistake. So it should be noted right here that I was about to make a terrible mistake. I almost tore that off at a full 45 degree angle. And then I realized that I wouldn't have enough surface to mount the remote mount. 
so that's when I decided to go back and just run that 45 into a 90. Not sure if you can tell, but here I'm just using a standard washer. I want to say it was like a quarter quarter inch washer, just to mock up some round corners, just to make the bracket look finished when it's done. And I realize I could have done this way later, but I like to see it ahead of time. There is a method to my madness as far as the size of this bracket. Of course, one, it has to line up to the pack break, but also these holes that I'm marking out are lining up with oil pan bolts. They were not just arbitrarily picked. With our cardboard template complete, it is now time to make it out of steel. With the template complete, and I'm pleased with the way it turned out, I'm now transferring it over to the actual steel just using a Sharpie marker. And now to make sure that I have nice crisp lines to cut on, I'm going to go back to using my square and my scribe and score a line into the steel.
So this is the point in the project where you know it's getting serious. It's time to grab those power tools and get this thing cut out. Now, don't make fun of me because my vise is on the floor. I've been trying to figure out a decent portable vise mount. I just haven't gotten there yet. The cuts are done and the sharp edges have been removed. So now let's take it over to the drill press and punch some holes. For some reason I didn't film putting that bracket onto the engine, but all I ended up doing was taking two of the oil pan bolts out and using longer ones, placing the bracket on the block side and then using two nuts to hold it on. That's just a temporary. Today is really about figuring out the hoses, I think. I picked this particular location for the oil filter because it put it very close to the oil pan which you have to climb underneath there to take the drain plug out anyway. Why not have the oil filter right there? A manufacturer should think about this. Hmm, like a Chevy 350. Genius! It's probably good for temporary. I threw the plastic bag over the oil filter as I removed it, figuring there would be quite a bit of oil dumping out of that filter. And much to my surprise, that filter was only about three quarters full as I took it off. Now I have heard of Cummins having an issue where it back bleeds out of the filter and siphons some of it out of there. So if you know what that problem is and how to fix it, I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know because it bothers me not having that filter completely full at startup. So with the close proximity of everything that's here, that's why I've opted to do the remote filter kit. Uh, by the time my air conditioning lines, very important in Florida, go on there, it's going to be in the way of the filter. Plus, you're just not going to be able to reach that filter properly once this motor is together.
Here's the piece that replaces your oil filter. I'm not going to put the O-ring in there right now uh, because this is not the one that stings. You can see it's a little bit beat up here, but it's got a lot of damage around this on this connection point. So Again, right now we're just figuring out where the hoses go. Flap. All right, so I'm just gonna use a zip tie to hold that to the fitting temporarily. And I'm gonna leave just inch or two extra make sure when I cut it everything's okay Should be plenty. Fantastic. Now I got to determine the best way to cut this. I do believe I'm going to give this little guy a go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just the end of this hose for a test. All right, that blade's not gonna do it. I almost said that blade's not gonna cut it.
but that had been a no pun intended. This blade is not compatible with this saw. All right, gonna have to come up with another plan. Here's an oldie but a goodie, and one that I have not used in a very, very long time. This stuff is apparently indestructible. Let's try a fresh blade. This stuff is indestructible. Probably gonna have to put an extension on the handles. Oh yeah. All right, time to come up with another plan. That plan? Try every cutting tool I own. Now I understand they make a set of loppers specifically for this, but I don't own a pair, currently. What I did end up using was a Lennox diamond blade and an angle grinder. Did it work? Yep. Do I suggest you do it? Nope. It didn't work great, it was really messy, it was really stinky, and it didn't make the greatest of cuts. But I was able to clean them up afterwards. For those who don't know how these work, the outer shell actually threads onto the hose in reverse 
and the inner part threads into that outer shell which actually crushes the hose between the outer shell and the inner fitting. With all the hoses in place and everything bolted down like it should be, the only thing left was the filter and the oil. One new oil filter and three gallons of Cummins approved oil and now she is properly lubricated. Although this is not a new engine nor a recently rebuilt engine, I still have full intentions on changing the oil within the first thousand miles of driving. And that's only because the oil that came out of her was as black as night, and I would like to get as much of that flushed out as possible. I don't really know the history of this engine, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. I've enjoyed this project. This was a fun one. But unfortunately, this is the end of another episode of Fun King Garage. Now, the Fummins project will go on because, well, because I need my truck done. But I've got a couple of other projects that I have to kind of slide in in between. One of which is the Talon that you've seen in the beginning of this episode. It's got a deadline and I've got some good plans for it and a lot of work to do on it. So look for that coming up. I want to thank you for tuning in and as you know, it's time for me to grab my bag, hit the road and find my next adventure. And hopefully that adventure is in the air conditioning because this 100 degree heat is terrible. Thanks for watching.